Okay, welcome everyone. So this is the first day of June and our theme this month for the collective is acceptance. So our inquiry tonight is based around that theme and it'll be a different format than we've been doing in the past. And I want to support us in uncovering our own experiences of what acceptance is through, um, through some guided exercises. So this is an experiential participatory container. So to, as a contrast to a lot of our containers are study group. And so we're looking at things theoretically. So I invite you to go into the experiences that that I invite, you know, that the mm, the exercises to really see what happens so that we're testing out on ourselves what is acceptance, what happens, what's, you know, like so we can look at it firsthand, we can have a direct experience. So that's um I invite you to experience and participate in in the exercises <clears throat> so what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be inviting a um in sequence particular experiences of our lives and to notice those experiences and to give them space so for those of you who may have been at Amanda's session at Fourth Density Saturday recently, um, it's similar to, to that. It's similar to giving space to an experience. And we're going to be doing that sequentially from one experience to the next. Yeah, there's more I can say about it, but I think I'll hold off for now and we'll just get into the experience. Okay. So first, our first taste. Right now, I invite you to allow yourself to simply be and do and think and experience and feel exactly as you do, exactly as you are. Simply allow yourself to be as you are, to feel as you do, to be thinking the thoughts that you're thinking, In general, allow whatever is happening in your experience right now. <clears throat> and I invite you to notice what happens. And you simply allow yourself to be as you are. And don't share about it yet. Just continue to experience. Notice what happens when you allow yourself to be as you are. Notice what happens to the physical sensations in your body, to your emotions. Notice what happens to your thoughts, to your frame of mind.
when you give yourself complete permission Now, I invite you to think of a person in your life that you find irritating or annoying or you have challenge with. And right now, I invite you to allow yourself to feel irritated, annoyed, to experience this challenge. Give it space. Give yourself the freedom to experience whatever is already there with that person. And notice what happens when you give it space. And now I invite you to Find some desire or longing in your life. Something you really want or feel that you need. And really allow that to be as best you can. Give it space. And as we're looking at this desire and longing, it's like, um, if it's already there anyway, may as well give it space. May as well let it be and see what happens. Now, I invite you to find something in your life that you take personally. Relationship, where you have that tendency, perhaps. Something that someone says to you and it stings. You want them to quit. 
And just give some space to that. Allow yourself to take that personally. Whatever that is, allow yourself to make meaning about what they say or they do, to make it about yourself. Give that some space. Now let's look at the past. I invite you to look at, let's just look at the past as a whole. And I want you to give yourself permission to have done and said and thought and felt everything you did and said, and thought, and felt. Just give it space. And notice what happens. And you give yourself the freedom to have done what you did. And now let's look at the future and just right now I invite you to allow yourself the freedom to do the future exactly the way you're going to do it. Give that space. Whatever it is that you're going to say or feel or believe, give yourself space to do the future exactly the way you're going to do it. And notice what happens. And let's pair that past and future ex exactly as they are or will be with how we want them to be or wish they could have been. So let's look back at the past where you wish it had been different and give yourself permission. Allow yourself right now to wish that the past had been different. Give that wish, that desire, that longing, give it space.
and notice what happens. And looking again at the future and the way you want the future to be. And just give yourself freedom to want exactly what you want right now. Just the experience of wanting right now. Give it space. And anything you notice arising through this experience, through these exercises, whatever it is that's arising that's here for you, give it space. Give yourself permission. If you're bored, give that space. Give yourself permission to feel bored completely. Or if you're annoyed or resisting or overcome or whatever it is that's arising. Just to try it, give it some space. Give yourself the freedom to be. Just as you are. And to think just as you're thinking. And one more time, blanket permission, allowing freedom to be and do and feel and experience exactly as you are, exactly the way you do right now. And I invite you to notice that there is space in reality for whatever it is that you're feeling or thinking or experiencing. In reality, it's part of your freedom to be exactly as you are. So just see what it's like to mirror reality for just a few minutes and give it space. Take a few moments to integrate all of that and then feel free to share what you notice. Whether it was, you know, something amazing and beautiful like an insight or something that seems not as, you know, preferable. What did you notice?
Hi. Hi. I noticed this is Lisa. I noticed that I am so tired mm. and I felt like deflated, you know, like a balloon, like a sorry balloon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was twice as big a couple of days ago, and now it's like soft and yeah, uh, chalky. Yeah, yeah, and I don't often give myself permission to feel tired. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that now if you're up for it. Yeah, yeah. Just make space to be that squishy, chalky, deflated balloon. To feel that. Just to see what it's like. And what do you notice? Is there anything that arises on the heels of allowing that experience? Yeah, there's um, a little, I don't know, the best word I have for it is vulnerability. Yeah. Um, like it feels vulnerable to feel tired. Yeah. And let's just give that space. Just allow that's the sensation and the story of vulnerability. And what do you notice now? Well, now I feel less vulnerable and more uh, serene. Tired, but like there's a, I guess, a greater level of acceptance of the, the scary part of being accepted. My exhaustion is past. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's just give space to feeling serene. Allow yourself the freedom to feel serene. Anything you notice that you want to share from that? Yeah, I just, I think it was a like maybe a blind spot of, um, you know, not ha not having permission for myself to be mm -hmm. tired. Yeah. I mean, I might have noted on one level, but I didn't realize how that was blocking me from self-love. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Just give a little space to that recognition. This is the moment to know, to know that. It wasn't a moment before now. This is it. So just let it be right now. Thanks for sharing, Lisa. Thanks, BJ. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to share what you noticed from the exercise or, yeah. I, we went into feeling 
irritation with another person or displeasure with another person. And then I think right after that, we went into giving permission to want Hmm. to have longing or desire. And I felt pain, like energetic, emotional. Um, I was scared to want. Yeah. It was a legitimate fear response which was way more uncomfortable than Mm -hmm. irritation with another person which on the surface you would think would be more uncomfortable but as soon as we moved into giving space for longing a painful fear response yeah showed up so are you open to making a space for that pain? And if you're not, that's okay. We can give permission to whatever's here. I still sense this fear response. This feels like it has a really deep root. Yeah. So what about if we give permission to that fear? Just allow yourself to feel as afraid as you do right now, not to amplify it or grow it, but just it's already here. So give it some space. Allow yourself the freedom to feel afraid. It's a permission and an allowance, right? Yeah. To give space to it. It's it's a level of acceptance. Yeah. Well, to me, mm, yeah. So to bring it back around to acceptance, one of the most powerful ways that I practice acceptance is to notice that there's already space for whatever's here. Right. If I'm feeling fear, it's already reality happening. has space for fear. And I can tell myself there's not space for fear and I shouldn't be feeling fear. And that's not the right thing to be doing. And I can resist it and try to suppress it. But if it's already here, there is space for it. Yeah, so just give yourself permission to have fear, to feel afraid right now. Yeah, and if you notice you're wanting the fear to go away, you can give that permission too, because that's all, that's here too, right? The desire for fear to go away. Give that space. Thanks, Nia. Anybody else want to share anything you noticed? Sure. So I went into the process feeling anxious and powerless with my outcome like I feel like I have a choice and free will 
but in the end, certain things are going to line up the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And it's comforting, but also anxiety inducing. And yeah, with my current state at my work and just with things going on in life, I've been in and out of I got the image of kind of one foot on earth and then one foot in like space with stars. So I'm like one foot's here, one foot's there. And I'm kind of in both. Like I get upset and then I'm like, nope, I shouldn't. And then I rework through it and I'm just kind of in this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And thinking about my, my future and what 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 seemed like the best just imagine your future and it would be just figuring out how to end just mental suffering for Mm -hmm. any event or situation so that i'm not thinking about the what ifs and i'm more just aware and out of this anxiety mind i guess yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you're speaking my language amanda has heard me like probably a thousand times over the years to say that i'm here for the end of suffering that's that's what i consider her one way that i express my, what i consider to be my personal mission it's like i'm tracking this down I know the mystics have talked about it. I know it's a possibility. Okay, let's do it. This is what I'm here for. I am here for this. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, are you open to a little coaching? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I just invite you to allow yourself to want things a certain way. and to feel powerless. Just give space to that experience and see what happens. What do you notice? So I was thinking about having a stable financial future and then just being powerless to, I I saw the words stable financial future kind of like spiral out of view. And it was, if you're, if you're aware and aware of serving then you'll be guided, hopefully, to Hmm. job that will be fulfilling and provide. So So that's like information that you received? Yeah, just kind of, I guess, being powerless to that situation of wanting financial, not freedom, but just to be okay would be to just get out of the way, be powerless to it. And Mm -hmm. that came in the form of just trying to be more aware and looking how to serve, I guess, instead of worrying. Mm. Yeah. So what can be really helpful with this practice too is to like start to break apart the different pieces so there's like the the sense of feeling powerless and there's also wanting a specific outcome so I did like um group them together 
in, in my invitation to you. Um, but I think it also can be helpful to take them one at a time. Mm, because in my experience, when, when we pair, right, so we're all aware of the, um, you know, the sort of the, the veil, the, the, um, the way that our thoughts can appear to be reality, which is, um, part of my experience of what creates the veil. Um, so when we pair an image, so in this case, like an image of the future, um, and a feeling, a sensation in the body and the meaning that we make of it. These seem to be three particular ingredients that create, you know, sort of a, the power of an inner simulator of like, oh yeah, that's going to happen. That future's going to happen. And I feel this way. And part of my proof that it's going to happen is that I feel this way. And the meaning that I make of it is I'm totally powerless or, you know, and terrible things are going to happen and there's something wrong with reality. You know, so we, we pair all of these pieces. So what let's do now is I invite you to take just one. So just the feeling of powerless as best you can. And it's not, it's not always simple. If it was simple, we could easily break the veil, right? So they're kind of like mashed together or glued together, but just as best you can, allow yourself to release images of the future and release any story, any meaning that you make about the feeling of powerless. And just allow that feeling, the sensations, the movement of energy, powerless in the body. Give it space to be exactly as it is. And what do you notice? That there's this little pea-sized light that's in the heart area. And no matter what happens, it's there, silent and unmoving. And then there's just planes going around and the trees and birds chirping. And mm. imagine those as like swirling energies mixing with each other and there's just this little pea-sized light that is there viewing everything that's mm. all around. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, that little light can still be aware of the anxiety coming in or how do mm -hmm. I remember that awareness that's not in here but more in here right so. right yeah Take yeah and it. so yeah and so my experience like when we kind of pair those those three elements together like I was talking about that's a way of at least seeming to block our guidance and block the intelligence that you experienced just came in you know, um, I don't think that we ever actually can block it, but it really seems as it's like, I'm alone. It's terrible. It's spiraling out of control. You know, it's like, it really seems like it. And when we're able to allow one experience at a time and give it space, there's like cracks between, between those pieces and more information is available always. That's what I find. Like I, everything that I've ever brought to inquiry there's more information available there's intelligence there's more peace when i'm able to make space for it so 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then um, what you can also do later on your own, or we can do together on this call, um, is take those other, you know, take the other pieces that I mentioned. So for instance, the image of the future, you know, like where things are, I, I think you said spiraling out of control or whatever that, that image of the future looks like. And just, just with that, as best you can, allowing, you know, the, the emo emotions and sensations to be aside for a moment and the meaning that you're make of it, making of it to be aside for a moment, just that image Give it space. Allow yourself to think that thought, to see that image, and give it space. And then the same with the meaning that you're making of it. You know, whether it's like um, something about you, I'm no good, I'm never going to be worth anything, oh, or something about life, you know, life doesn't support me, Whatever meaning, um, whatever sort of like post-it note you could put onto that feeling and that future, or that image, then you can allow space for just that. Give yourself complete permission to believe that thought and to make that meaning. It's a good thing to play around with. Yeah. Um, and so another thing I feel called to say right now is this practice, just giving space allows us to, um, I think it was, yeah, Lisa, you shared that, like it revealed what might've been hiding, like in a blind spot. I don't know if you said those words exactly, but something like that, it revealed something um that you hadn't seen before and to me that's one of the most powerful things about this practice is like when we're living with rules you know like i need to be a certain way and i need um i need to appear this way i need to act this way i need to feel this way i need to believe this way that is going to create shadow that is going to create blind spots because it it makes it so that we win whatever that thing is that arises, we don't want to see it. We want to resist it and say that it's not there, it's not there, it's not there, it's definitely not there. It, it, that is the mechanism that creates blind spots and shadow. And so this practice allows us to begin to shine light on the like, um, shadowy, you know, back corner of the closet in our, in our inner experience. And what begins to happen too, is like this, this practice is so, so connected with, um, many, so there's many lineages of self-inquiry, meditative self-inquiry many ways to practice it. And I kind of like to weave a lot of them together, but one experience that's really common is like most of you, if not all of you have probably heard of Ramana Maharshi and his main practice was trying to find the I, who am I? Where's the I? And the experience that so many people find when you go to look, okay, it's like, oh, the eye is that image that I see in the future. That's that's me or or a, an idea of myself. That's me. Or the sensation in the body. That's me. Or like you, you go to start to look for I, like that's me. And as soon as you open to it and you're curious about it, that sense, that experience dissolves. Whatever it is that you're looking for, dissolves and it's the same with these experiences they they don't always dissolve right away but they often fall away like as soon as i feeling so angry and then i make space for the anger 
the anger go? <laughs> I was, I was so freaking pissed off. There was fire and like, I can't even find it now. Now that I'm allowed to have it, it's gone. The space is like, um, it, it, because the openness that holds the anger is really what we are. And so as soon as we're allowing what's arising, we're more in touch with our true nature, which is the openness, which is the space. That, you know, so acceptance, in my experience, isn't really as much something that we do. It is something that we already are. What, and what the practice of acceptance is as far as I can tell, is more an undoing of the other things that we thought we were. So allowing it to arise, giving it perfect space, falls away into radical acceptance. You're muted, Lisa. Did you want to say something? Wow. Wow, that was such an epiphany to what the way you described it. It's so it's interesting, like um, I found this to be true with all spiritual teachings. It's so simple. It's yeah. so simple. And then you hear it in such a way that it is so simple that like for me, I hear it in such a way that it, oh, it's so simple. What you resist persists. Yeah. Like, shadow like I've heard that a million times but just the way that you said if we are the open space that experiences and all we have to do is just go back to being space for or allowance or acceptance for all the different sounds you know I think um you know was mentioned the planes and the birds and all the swirling energy everything that's around us we just allow I just allow it to be, let it be, and then there's freedom. Yep. But times I get caught in a cycle of resistance and like the shadow <clears throat> that I have around not being, you know, never being exhausted, never being tired, always having an inexhaustible well of energy to handle everything because that's my ID in the world, you know, and I didn't know until I just let myself be tired for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was just really cool. I love the way you expressed it. Hmm. Awesome. I love jamming with you on this. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, and so another piece that I want to just like jump in there with, with too is like when there's space to be all of those things, in my experience, you know, then it's like, okay, they can they can dissolve and I can just be the open space. And at the same time, when I'm free to be angry or to be scared or to be whatever the thing that was uncomfortable before, now I just see it as part of my freedom. And it's kind of exciting. Yeah. You know, it's like, I get to be angry. Oh my gosh. Out of all the infinite things, there's a tree and there's a bird and there's a cloud and there's angry. And that's what I get to be right now. And then it's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. And there's yeah. like, you know, I can transform the anger, but I don't need to transform the anger, which paradoxically is what transforms the anger. But it, allowing my freedom to be angry is like, wow, amazing. Huh. That is so cool. Yeah. <sighs> I think so too. So would you in that moment of being i get to feel the anger there's that moment of being angry then the switch of okay now i'm feeling it mm. so i guess there's a point where maybe some might judge themselves in that moment to that i i felt anger so i don't know if you've worked through that potentially of, yeah being the awareness and then not judging or having to move yeah. past that. Yeah. So um, I think, 
this practice of giving space to all of it. Um, okay. There's a lot of things that I want to say. Woo. Okay. Allowing the mind to organize itself. Okay, so I think that a lot of the working through, a lot of the processing of, of energy, processing of emotions, A, I think that's basically part of what we're here to do. Like that is soul evolution, uh -huh. is allowing ourselves to identify as this thing or that thing, and then becoming aware of it, becoming aware of it, making space for it, processes it. So- when we have judgment of ourselves, that's like, I think we've talked about this in inquiring together before. Um, that's like creating a rule for like, this is how I should be. I shouldn't be judgmental. Now, there's a reason that I think I shouldn't be judgmental because of what I think it's going to give me. Always what, what we think <clears throat> something is going to give us when I, tr as far as I can tell, when I track that back with people and I've watched them do that in their own inquiry, it always brings us to something like, so that I can have peace, so that I can be myself, so that I can relax, something like that, so that I can be free to be what I am. So what we can do is, look at, okay, so this judgment of myself, judgment that I shouldn't be angry, is that actually bringing me towards the thing that I'm looking for? You shouldn't be angry. Stop being angry. Is that bringing me towards the evolution that I'm interested in? Is it helping me relax? Is it giving me freedom to be as I am? Is it giving me peace? And often it isn't. So living by rules is a resistance. It's, it's control. And from as far as I can tell, as I interpret the teachings of Ra, that's how we use control on ourselves. And I take that to be ne negatively polarizing in some ways because it, it's also mixed as far as I can tell because the intention is good. The intention is to evolve in a certain way, you know, to evolve positively, but I'm doing it through negative means, which is control, which is basically not trusting my true nature. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens instead, what can happen is like, okay, I look and I see this control, this judgment of myself. Don't be angry. Okay. It, A, it's not giving me what I wanted, which you know, um, you can take my word for it, or like, it's more helpful to actually track this for yourself and go into, um, well, what is it that I was hoping? Like if, if I could do that, if I could a hundred percent not judge or, you know, like that, that method could give me what I'm wanting. What is it that I would, and you just keep tracking that down. Like, what is it that I was wanting? Hmm. And notice that it's not working because most often it isn't. Sometimes it is. Sometimes the constrictions that we put on ourselves are helpful and they work for a time, you know, like we can look back at our childhood and like, I did that thing, you know, to keep me safe. Yes, it kept me safe, you know, like, okay, it worked. And then now it's still a pattern. Is it still keeping me safe and do I still need to do it? Okay, often no. And then when we give space for it, what arises instead is intelligence, <clears throat> right? So I was living from judgment and constriction around anger. Eh, probably it doesn't work. When I make space for it, though, what arises instead is intelligence that can counteract or, um, you know, move me away from anger or dissolve the anger or interact with that person in a different way. Right. So what we're trying to get to is, um, you know, through the rule, what actually works better is a surrender and a trusting of our true nature. 
which doesn't mean that we're always ready to do that. You know, we do have to go through the evolution of, no, I needed that in order to learn the lesson, to accept it and to allow the intelligence to arise. So that was a lot. I don't know if that was an answer to your question. Yeah, definitely. I just wonder overall if it's it's part of the process like the, the judgments almost unavoidable yeah like everyone's gonna have that yeah. ego in the battle of am i doing this right i mean it seems like it right like if i look around on earth i haven't seen anybody who just you know naturally never judged never went through that um and I also think um, we've all done it enough to learn from it, you know? Hmm. We've all experienced it enough to get the catalyst and to process it, right? So it so is possible also to um, release that pattern of judgment through through insight through looking at it through shining the light as we are Marilyn did you mean to raise your hand yes uh there we go um well I got that insight again that I had when you were uh speaking having us go through the exercise that acceptance equals love equals acceptance except love equals acceptance equals love equals yeah. acceptance yeah. um just bang and um and i also learned that i really value freedom and mm -hmm. i, re I realize why in your speaking it's because i want to be my true nature i want the freedom to be true to myself yeah. and that's why i've always resisted rules and you know, question things and um, yeah. yeah, just that it just brought me closer in to myself and, and realizing why yeah. I want love. I like, I, I realize I like, I want freedom. I value health and I value balance. I was just feeling all of that as we were going through that process of and I also found it really hard. I couldn't find anything to take personally because as soon as you suggested that, I was already in this state of like, I don't take anything personally. I, there's no need to. And I'm not caught in that luckily right at this minute, even though yeah. maybe yesterday I was. So and so that I love that ex you were asking us to kind of accept that acceptance is here. Mm -hmm. we don't have to do anything yeah it's already here it's yeah. already been accepted tune into it in a in a flash so thanks <clears throat> yeah hallelujah <clears throat> it's already been accepted and hallelujah you didn't find anything to take personally you know <laughs> it's great <laughs> you're muted do you want to say that again I just said at this particular juncture, I'm not taking anything personally. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So any thoughts about what is that? What is this? Just to point it back to the monthly theme, acceptance. What do we know about acceptance? What is acceptance? Or anything else that's alive to share. But yeah, I'm just interested in hearing your insights or your thoughts about how this all connects to acceptance. Yeah, Amanda. Well, what's coming up for me, especially with this exercise, what accepts what acceptance is for me is a lack of resistance like with, with this whole exercise every time 
it was allowing reality to be as it is. I just got so relaxed mm -hmm. over it, over it. I was like, oh, oh my goodness. And it, I realized that relaxation feels like a lack of resistance. Like I kept, kept releasing the um, resistance that I had to mm. all, of, all of it. All of it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So acceptance is a lack of resistance. Yeah. I, yeah, Fairland. I feel it as um when I tune into the word acceptance, I just take a breath and I stop trying stop trying. I yeah. Stop trying to do anything or get anything or yeah. Learn anything, you know, make anything happen. Mm, I feel that. It's very calming. Yeah. It could be a little scary too. Like, uh oh, I'm not in control. Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Lisa. I feel like acceptance is, <clears throat> I mean, I might. I might be very much in the flow and things might be happening and I might be a part of a process and still be in a state of, a state of acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of more like for me when I am not trying to control the outcome mm -hmm. or particularly in my case, not trying to fix anyone or yeah. control their outcomes. Yeah. But I might still very much in a flow state of creating and making stuff happen but it's it's kind of coming through me instead of uh well shadow driven you know like i need things to be a certain way so that you know everybody feels a certain way and i'm trying to control the feelings or whatever yeah. trying to control experience yeah that's that's the opposite of acceptance. I might have hidden agendas running when I'm di when I'm in a, a way like that, which fortunately is less and less. But I still find myself doing it. Um, mm -hmm. Like um, my nephew's in town, and it's his first time away from his parents. He's thirteen, and he's working for my dad, um, who's very sweet, and I love my father. But he drinks too much, you know, and I'm like trying to control my dad's drinking so that my nephew can have a better experience. Yeah. That is acceptance. <laughs> yeah. But okay to be honest and say, this is what it's like for me. Um, and consider that when you're around um, this young kid, you know, who's this is going to be a lasting, exp you know, uh, impression on him. Yeah. So it might, I mean, I might do the very same thing, but it's, there's an energy about trying to control the outcome and just speaking my truth and being honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and a holistic acceptance accepts the desire to control too. You know, They're, like one of my, one of my teachers says, um, if I'm not free to be X, I'm not free. So if I'm not free to want to control my dad's drinking, I'm not free. You know, huh. if I'm not free to um, like need to make a certain amount of money or whatever, you know, I'm not free. So a holistic acceptance from my perspective, like you were saying just a minute ago, it can be very active. You know, there's like, there's multiple, you know, dimensions and layers of a full acceptance a full acceptance like something that I've played with um starting years ago was like just beginning to allow myself um while I was driving to not know where I was going in a way like okay I know I'm I'm driving home but I'm just 
I'm letting my body do it. And, and I started with driving because I think we, we all have kind of had the experience of like coming home on a road trip, for instance, in the last, like, you know, 20 minutes usually, or maybe even longer than that was just kind of autopilot. So I started with driving, like my body knows how to do it. So there would be moments where it's like, I don't know whether she's going to turn left here or she's going to go straight. Let's see. And, you know, she being me sitting at the wheel, let's see what she's going to do. Oh, she's turning left. Oh, look, there she goes. And it was a practice in like trusting myself. And so the more that I do that, it's like, well, sometimes I need to criticize my dad, you know, like, oh, look, there she goes. She's yelling at dad again, you know, like, and and if there's something that I don't accept about that and I do need to work with, then I, then I work with that too, you know, and the, 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 mm, like if it was painful afterwards, you know, and I look back and I go, oh, like, I can't believe I did that. And that was, you know, treated my dad that way. And, you know, then, okay, what needs to be worked through? Um, but again, from my perspective, I don't think we get to the place we're trying to go through rules and constriction. If I make a rule on myself that I can't say the thing to dad, that's not actually moving me forward in the process of soul evolution. I need to be free to say that, which can allow wisdom to come in that might help me not say that or say it in a different way or handle the situation differently. Right on. That's cool. Yeah. I get so jazzed about this stuff. This is why I geek out about. <laughs> I, it's contagious. I feel it. It makes me wonder, well, what is freedom? We we're going, well, what is acceptance? And I'm going, why am I so jazzed about freedom? What is freedom? No rules. No rules. Um, purity. It's some kind of purity of being in the moment, being free to make mistakes, be wonderful, the whole gamut. Yeah. Yeah. Be free to be freedom to be. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I take freedom to be like, there's some, there's some words or like qualities that I take to be sort of synonyms for reality and freedom, I think is one of them. I experience reality to mirror freedom like we're free i'm free to do things that i don't you know I'm, I'm free to like go chop down a tree right now i'm free to do that and things that are more violent or you know things that i wouldn't want to do but i'm free to do them I mean, you know we can just look around on earth and see all the freedom that we're free to do you know we're free to pollute the ocean we're free we are free to do things right and so i take freedom to be uh, a synonym for reality similar to space like space is one that i return to a lot because i find it to be really helpful in reality there's space to do and think and be um and i find like that that's one of the things that i find really helpful about like for instance studying the secret of light which some of us are doing on wednesday on wednesdays um, like understanding the patterns of energy and like the way the universe works really helps me find how I mirror that and, and understand reality more so that I can mirror it and continue on my journey to the end of suffering. You know, like that's what I'm here for. Um, so yeah, I take freedom to be, for me, it's, it's one of the synonyms that I find for just just reality that's what it is yeah cool Nia so this whole time it's I'm I always like to get to the root I'm like why where did this come from and I'm sure there's probably a ton of basic psychology work around childhood woundings and things like that, but there's something called character development. And 
it's conception through four years old, you learn how to be in the world. You develop what's called your character strategy. Uh, in conception through four years old, you learn how to be in the environment and how you connect with those closest in your environment. Hmm. So based on the people you have around you and what their character strategies are, you end up finding a way to fit in or plug in so that we have connection because connection between people is an innate thing that we have energetically, emotionally connecting with those around us. And so we learn how to be in the world based on that environment conception through four years old. So if you stop and think about that for a minute, a lot of the controls that I have in place for myself or the things I don't allow are based on patterning from a really young age, just being a curious little child, you know, a toddler, two or three years old, and I go to pick up the pretty thing on the shelf. Oh, no, no, don't do that. That's wrong. We get this message that I'm not free to do that. I'm not accepted for being me. I don't want to get punished. I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to have a negative response system in place for an acceptable three-year-old's actions of curiosity. So we are programmed, especially, dare I say, especially in this culture, but it's, it's worldwide, that we are programmed from a really really young age to not be in a state of acceptance of ourselves we're not allowed to be an angry toddler stomping their feet because they didn't get their favorite food that night Hmm. we are not allowed to be in this state of a total radical acceptance of ourselves Hmm. we're all super mega all you know blanket statements here but most of us are heavily conditioned how to behave and act in the world yeah and as we sit here and remove a layer and remove a layer and accept and make space for this freedom and this reality then we end up sometimes we're in the flow state and it's like oh the flow capital f the flow state where we're we don't have constraints and we don't have resistance. We don't have the contracted energy. We have that expanded one with everything feeling of flow. That's when fun things happen, like our creativity shows up or we, you know, are doing something physical with our bodies, like art or ceramics or whatnot. And we have that moment of bliss or ecstatic acceptance or, you know, recognizing that the reason like why why did that happen in that moment for me oh because I had no restraints Mm -hmm. I was in a state of acceptance for myself I was just being in a moment in that flow state shows up and a lot of us work hard like there's a level of hard work we're doing the work and we're we're taking our flashlight on on the shadows in the corners and like when something comes up we question it and we inquire and we're like we're doing the digging like for me I always have this root analogy I'm like I gotta dig I gotta I gotta get all the way down and pull this root up and figure out what this is where this came from and why it's attached to my tree you know and where did this come from and so much so much is just conditioning to be accepted in our society as uh, from such a young age and we never questioned it. And now here we are full blown adults just trying to have a self inquiry of accepting anger, accepting sadness, accepting longing, accepting fear, accepting the most basic fundamental layers of emotion and the human psyche I mean to me that's just that gives me an extra depth that allows me to go down another layer to dive deep into those dark waters of self and be like yeah 
there's room for all of those pieces. I can get into the what ifs if I hadn't been told I wasn't allowed to be an angry child, if I I wasn't allowed to be authentic with my emotions. We learned to to shut those down or control, contract, or just not be authentic. And making space for and accepting each piece as it comes up, that freedom to be like your beingness it's an acceptance of being yeah i don't know that's what i was digging yeah um something i want to add in about about childhood and conditioning too is um you know with the example of like oh you know, I'm stomping my feet and I'm crying and I, or I'm reaching up onto the shelf to grab the pretty thing. You know, what I found as I've looked back is in reality, if we look at reality, I was allowed to grab the pretty thing. There may have also been consequences because parents or caregivers or whatever we're also allowed to have their response. But reality actually allows me to stomp my feet, to grab the pretty thing. And all of the conditioning, you know, that I was taught is what I also was free to take on. And I think that's super powerful. Whatever I took on, I was free to take on. That was part of my freedom. And it's also part of my freedom to let it go because it never has actually been what I am or my true nature. It was a choice and I chose it because it served me in a certain way. I chose to not stomp my feet because then more likely my caregiver will not, you know, do whatever they were going to do. But I chose it. Right. And so I think finding the freedom in it to make that choice, it supports us to undo that choice. Versus, you know, like one of the, um, uh, I think, um, ego stories that where is, is so common that we love on this planet is, is something related to a victim story, you know, that like I had to, they forced me to, I didn't, you know, it's, it's put upon me or whatever. Um, and that, um, can be a really attractive story until we actually see it's incredibly disempowering. Um, you know, there's something, exciting about it in terms of like um it it releases my um guilt perhaps or my responsibility i i don't have to take credit for it but it it perpetuates the sense that they have control over me which ultimately is false so anyway just something to throw in there too about all that. So yeah, go ahead, Lisa. Um, I just briefly reminded me of I was dating somebody who was a mother um, of a teenager and I remember saying um, that something along the lines of oh having kids just seemed like uh, too much of a restriction on freedom and she corrected me and said no I I made a decision to be a mother and then I was free to commit to that for 20 years 
and enjoyed every bit of it because she found freedom in her commitment. It was her decision mm. and it was her freedom to commit to her decision. And that was the first time I ever heard that, like kind of like what you were saying right then. And I was like, oh, wow, there is a lot of freedom in that. Making oh. a decision. Making a commitment. Yeah. I love that. Gave me chills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how about we one more time? Allow yourself, give yourself permission, space, freedom to be, do, think, feel, believe, experience exactly the way you do and you are right now. including if you're wanting to have a specific experience or wanting to change the experience you're having, make space for that too. Allow yourself to be exactly as you are. Notice that there's space. Any final takeaways or comments? Amanda. I'm noticing with the space, the amount of relaxation I feel in my body and I'm realizing that that feeling of relaxation can be an indicator for whether or not I'm resisting reality. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just to say again something that I was pointing to before, I, I find that living from a state of relaxation can also be a really active place to be. And I think Lisa said something similar, like, uh, yeah, and like the flow state that Nia was talking about, like, I can lay back and let this one do whatever she's going to do, which might be like a vigorous workout at the gym. Or might be like busting ass and getting, you know, cleaning house, you know. But I can do it from a super relaxed, trusting this one to do what she's doing kind of place. That's exciting. That sounds empowering. Like you're owning it. Like mm -hmm. you're owning the relaxation. You're owning the freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then for me, like um, living in a practice of relaxing and surrendering there is, is parallel to or is the same as living from trust of myself, trust of my true nature. And then anything that arises as resistance shows me where I'm resisting my true nature or thinking that I need to control, which if I'm looking for those things, 
you know, which I think all of us in some ways are, then that's exciting. It's like, oh, there was some resistance. Oh, good. Like, oh, it's so good to be in relaxation and surrender and heck yeah. Oh, this is so good. And then there's some, some resistance arises and it's like, oh my gosh, that's so good too. What just happened? What am I resisting? <laughs> what am I trying to control? Where do I think I'm not good enough yet or reality needs to be a certain way? No, I love that. Like that, that, blah. <laughs> Let me try that again. I love that. It's like using the resistance as a marker for noticing. Yeah. Now that I, I'm noticing that there's a resistance, I can acquire yeah. and a way yeah. to <clears throat> shift out of that. Yeah. Did you have so, something, was, Neil? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was kind of playing off that, like when you mentioned recognizing that resistance and kind of bringing like a happy, joyous feeling. And my final insight was combining acceptance with thankfulness. And sometimes mm -hmm. if it's hard to accept the situation, then try to combine it with something to be thankful for. And yeah. I think that maybe that, feeling that you experience when you are aware and you make that switch to the recognition of being able to accept that maybe you're like, I don't know, is that, a, is it a little bit of a thankful feeling for you? Like, mm. oh, I, oh I yeah, sure. For, like, yeah. I, I mean, know. not always, like, I'm not trying to say I'm always there, but yeah, yeah. for sure. Like when, when I'm, like juiced up in my practice of inquiry, like some, you know, negative experience or emotion arises. This is, it. this is great. Okay. You know, cause I know that there's more freedom on the other side. And like, I'm, I know how to like, okay, uh, here's something to welcome to, you know? So how about I'll um, leave that as an invitation going forward? Like, for the next, you know, tomorrow, let's say, oh, which happens to be my son's birthday. Um, <laughs> yay. Um, for Asher's birthday, <laughs> you're invited to the party of getting excited about negative emotions because, or what we call negative emotions, you know, what um, anger, irritation, sadness, grief. Um, yeah, any of those. <laughs> Or, or any of the other ones we call negative emotions. As best you can, practice getting excited about it because look, here's an opportunity to accept, you know, to try the experiment again. Can I make space for this? I feel hopeless right now. Oh my gosh, how great. I'm going to make space for hopelessness and see what happens. So you're invited to that party. <laughs> I'm coming. Sweet. Yep. And I also invite you to give yourself complete permission to decline the invitation because <laughs> you're free. <laughs> Love y'all. Thank you, BJ. Thank, Thank you, you for the taste of intelligence. Mm. Holistic acceptance. Thanks for Party on. with me while I geek out. <laughs> Party on. Party on. <laughs> party on, party people. Mm. Good night. <laughs> Bye, all I don't want to hang out because you're just so beautiful. <laughs> I see you, everybody. Bye. Feel Bye. better, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs>